everybody, this is Diane. I am continuing work on these uh, lacing card journals. I played around yesterday to figure out how I wanted to put this cover together. This is a vintage lacing card, the kind that had the holes punched in them and they came with a yarn that you would thread through the holes. Um, and I, I got three different ones from the flea market and they didn't come with the yarn or anything but <clears throat> I decided I wanted to make them into journals so I used this multicolored um, kind of trim and put it through the holes there's a little bit of a it was torn here where the the yarn got pulled on and tore it but that doesn't bother me and I figured out how I wanted to make this cover, and I did it. And now I'm going to make this one on camera so you can see how I did it. This was really fun. I just threw all kinds of stuff on this. I used this black and white toile fabric as the base, and then just added a whole bunch of stuff to it. So, the next card is this fruit basket and I added this kind of a thin blue chenille yarn through there. And I'm using this patchwork plaid fabric. Um, my mother made a tablecloth out of this when I was young. And how perfect, fruit and tablecloth. That's not why I did that, but. Uh, so what I have to do first of all is sew this to the fabric and then um, I'm using the green file folders for the other pieces to give them a little stability, but these will be sewn to the back side. Um, I think I left. I cut an extra piece. Yeah, I cut an extra piece just to help me with placement uh, on the back side because I won't be able to see this. So first of all, I am going to just sew this. I'm leaving a little bit of a border around. Um, to get the size of this piece, I laid out my pieces and I cut around. The, I figured out uh, how big I needed the piece to be and then I used um, pinking shears. On this one I didn't use pinking shears, so you don't have to. I just decided to do it on this one. And it's a little bit wider than it needs to be, but I, I can trim that off. I just wanted to have a little bit of leeway. So I'm just going to lay this on here. I've got to grab my glue. I left that over here. And to help hold it in place, I'm going to glue this. I taped down the ends of my yarn that I laced through the hole so that it doesn't loosen. and just kind of eyeball it so it's even between the top and the bottom just got a little bit of an edge <coughs> and now I'm just going to sew it on I should give it some time to dry which this glue doesn't take very long to dry and just I'm just using a zigzag because I like the way it looks Now, 
I want to add these pieces to the back side but I can't really see where this needs to go because I can't see the edge of this um, I had to pull off I had these glued down on the other journal that I on the other cover that I made and then um, when I you know folded it like like it would be folded I had it I had this sticking out too far like that so I had to pull them off and do them again um, so I'm going to lay this down right right where that one is just for a guide and I will just allow a little space between the two pieces Looks like I'm going to have to even up the fabric. When I'm done sewing because it's narrower down here than it is over here. So I didn't cut the fabric straight. Okay. Let's see if this folds up like it should. Actually, this is <clears throat> too close to the edge again. So I didn't do that very well, did I? a little more space between these two. That works because then I have a little bit of a fabric border between this and the spine. one to be quite so far away from it. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna sew these two pieces on. I don't want to bend this too much. It's vintage and it's already got some um, slight creases in it. So I'm going to try to make sure I don't have to do it where I have to fold this part into my into this part of my sewing machine. This um, 
green file folder is more flexible. it out and go a different direction. If you don't want to sew these pieces in, you just, just glue them down real good. You don't have to sew them. Okay, and this one I'll start up here. so that I don't have to fold the lacing card into my sewing machine. I'll just cut the threads and I will start up here just to sew that last edge down. I'm going to trim this edge with about a quarter of an inch hanging off. looks pretty good. Now I get to have the fun of decorating this. So I had already pulled out some things. I have this fringy trim that I could put at the top here. I thought I would use this decorator piece or this, um, this decorator fabric. It was a sample from a sample book and I thought it was fun with that parrot on it. To put there on the spine and I just added this little piece of a vintage patchwork piece. So on this one I used this part of a linen towel that would hang on the wall. I used a piece of this um, tablecloth fabric. So in a couple and two circles and a hexagon some bits of trim and there's a bigger piece of this patchwork. 
I have this uh, triangle that has watermelons on it and since we have a fruit basket here I thought that might be fun to just sew on the edge there. I have this um, trim that matches the colors. I don't know if I'll use it but I have it out just in case. Uh, I might put this pom-pom down at the bottom. Got another piece of this wool, felted wool. I don't think it's really wool, but it's something felted. It doesn't feel itchy. Wool makes me itch. I cannot bear having wool on my skin. And there's another piece of that toile. I like the lady on the swing. This was the piece I wanted to use. <clears throat> it's narrower and I, I cut it with pinking shears. I had this on here somewhere. trims and things over here to my right. I pulled these little paper doll fabrics out. I don't know. I might use them inside the journal. Don't know if I want to use any outside. I've got all kinds of pretty fun, bright trims. I think if I do use her, I don't want her to be so blocky. I'll have to do more of a fussy cut on her. Oh yeah, she looks a lot better like that. I could put some rickrack here with the pom-pom. So what I did was I pulled out all these trims and fabrics that I thought would be fun and then I just start trying them out and with an anything goes kind of attitude. I might put some of these buttons on the cover somewhere. It's a trim with dangling buttons. I don't want to put it on right now because <clears throat> I think it might get in the way while I'm doing other stuff. need something up here. I hope I find some really cool 
vintage trims at the flea markets this year. I really enjoy using my flea market trims. See, I think we need to do a little more back here. I have some of these flower grandmother's flower garden or Dresden plate pieces and oh I can't forget the circles. just playing. Nothing. It could be that these things don't stay where they are. Just playing. Okay, I think we got a good start here. So I'll remove these pieces and this and I'll work on the front. Some of it will be sewn down and some will be glued. I'll sew these pieces down. I think I'll sew her down so I don't have to stitch through her. my little girl. Where'd I put you, little girl? I 
Well, that's annoying. I don't see her on the floor. I do this all the time. I took it off and didn't pay any attention to where I put it. she is. How'd she get way over there? I'm going to glue this down. Right. And we will sew the parrot fabric to this. I think I want to make this a little narrower. I don't want it to be so wide. will work well. So just to make sure I sew it on straight, I'm going to tack it down with a little glue in the center. I can finish the outside so I can show you how I do the inside. And you don't have to add all of these embellishments. Oh, I don't want to fold that card. So I'm going to start down here. You can just use a piece of fabric and not add all of this extra stuff to it. But to me, this is what makes it fun. And then I have to sew this side. doing. I didn't zoom back out. I'm sorry. Okay. Just snipping some threads. I think 
just to save time I'm going to just glue this patchwork piece down. Folding it over will help me keep to this. Okay, I'm going to sew this piece down first. the fringe and I'm going to gather this up on it. this piece maybe not that piece maybe that and a circle that circle down a little more. I could add yo-yos or buttons or other items to this, I don't know, but I'm going to call it good for now and I'm going to do the inside. For the inside, I took these pieces of fabric that were on that fabric sample book and I just left the pieces with the paper on them. Can't see them. 
but I do like using them where you can see them. But all I did was sew it, sew it around, and then I sewed this piece on. And then you're going to end up with a pocket here. And then I trimmed the bottom because it's a little bit wide. that girl anyway. aware of what's on the other side so I'm not puckering and bunching things up. Back it up. I went. Whoops. I went too far. Okay. I can see through this fabric, so I can see where the edge of this is. I did sew through some of that fringe. But that's okay. I've just, just got a few pieces of yarn sewn, sewn down there. I did sew through her, but she looks good. Everything looks good. I'm going to trim this edge off. I didn't trim the spine piece even. I don't mind if it's a little longer. Adds a little interest. And now I am going to sew this piece on. I'll leave the fabric part or the paper part here. It'll give it a little more stability for the pocket. I don't think I did it that way on the other one. And I know these don't match, but that's part of the fun. It's just a very eclectic journal. I'm going to um, pin, pin this up out of the way so I don't sew that fringe down.
something was going on there. I don't know if it was just a fringe or if I went through the pin. It's caught on something. is missing. Oh, there it is. Pulled the pin right out and that's what, oh no, the pin went down in there. Hopefully it's not in the way of anything because I can't take that off. See if I can finish this. So I guess pinning that fringe out of the way was not a good idea. all disconcerted. Sorry. I was getting ready to thread it for a bobbin, to wind a bobbin. To bring the thread up. Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get some screwdrivers, get a screwdriver and take that off, see if I can get that pin out of there. So let me just show you what I would be doing. I would just sew all around there and then when I sew the signature in, this pocket isn't very big. I think it was bigger on the other one. Oh, I think my spine is just a little bit wider on this one. So yeah, it's not a very big spine or pocket. And I sewed some lace on as a pocket here. And I didn't want to put something in here and have it slide down here, so I sewed across here. So it's just a pocket right here. And that's why I ended up gluing this ribbon on to cover up that stitching. But I really like the way that looks. So this is what it'll look like. I added um, this to the end of it. And yeah, it'll look something like that. And hopefully I can do something with my sewing machine, otherwise I'm kind of... Oh, I'm a mess. So, thank you for watching. I'm sorry about the mishap at the end, but I don't want to redo this because I want you to see how I made this cover. So, wish me luck, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.